And so you're back there in your study guide. Very, very simple. Notice here the underlined portion. It says, The future resurrection of Christ's followers is founded upon the historical fact of Jesus' own resurrection. In other words, the reason that we can have confidence in our own resurrection is that we have confidence in the historical resurrection of Jesus. G.B. Hardy, in his marvelous book, Countdown, put it this way. He said, There are only two essential requirements. Two essential requirements. How many essential requirements, everyone? Two. That's exactly right. There are only two essential requirements. Number one, has anyone ever cheated death? And number two, is it available to me? Mr. Hardy goes on to say, let us survey the historical record. He says, Confucius' tomb, occupied. Buddha's tomb, occupied. Muhammad's tomb, occupied. Jesus' tomb, amen, empty. That's exactly right. Hardy goes on to say, argue as you will, but for me and my purposes, there is no point in following a loser. Now, when Mr. Hardy here uses the phrase following a loser, he's not using that phrase in the sort of nanny, nanny, boo, boo, pejorative sense. He's not saying, you know, you know, my dad can beat up your dad kind of a thing. What he's saying is, is that everyone will have to face this great eventuality called death. Buddha faced it and lost the battle. Confucius faced it and lost the battle. Muhammad faced it and lost the battle. But Jesus faced it and he was victorious. He won the battle with death. And as Mr. Hardy says, very simply, very powerfully, very logically, there are only two essential requirements. Has anyone ever cheated death? The answer to that is yes, the man Christ Jesus. And the second was, is it available to me? And Jesus said in John chapter 3 and verse 16, when speaking to Nicodemus, for God so loved the world, Nicodemus, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not what? Perish, but have, what would be the opposite of perishing? Everlasting life. Yes, someone has cheated death, number one, and yes, it is available to you by faith if you put your confidence, your belief, and your trust in the man Christ Jesus. Let's go back to our study guide here. We're actually on page two and we're making excellent time for which we praise the Lord. Now notice here on the screen, we're going to ask a question. It's the same question that's there in your study guide. And it is a question that unfortunately many people have not reflected adequately upon. It says, is the soul immortal or is there a resurrection? These two things are mutually exclusive. There, what did I say, everyone? mutually exclusive. It's an either or situation, not a both and. You can't say, oh yes, the soul is immortal and there's a resurrection. It doesn't make any sense. We'll talk about that in a little bit. It's either that the soul is immortal, that is non-dying, unending, or there's a resurrection. Either this or that. Now notice there in your study guide it says, this is a very important question, one that most Christians have not reflected upon adequately, even non-Christians. Consider, for example, the case of Mary. Mary, the mother of Jesus, has been making frequent appearances here on planet Earth to encourage, inspire, and warn believers of a coming calamity. These appearances, or sometimes called apparitions, are occurring with increasing frequency. Millions of people claim to have seen Mary at locations all over the globe, both urban locations, rural locations, western nations, eastern nations, so-called uh, third world countries and so-called first world countries. Millions of people claim to have seen this Mary. Bleeding statues, weeping statues, visions in the sun and clouds and physical appearances are all cited as mounting evidences that Mary has returned with an important message. This phenomenon has even been reported in many of the popular newspapers and news magazines in the world. In fact, if I had time, I could walk you through a stack of materials that I have in my own study that's probably an inch to two inches thick, just full, full, full of articles about this very thing. People see Mary in the clouds. People see Mary between two buildings in the sunlight. People see Mary, you remember this, even in a grilled cheese sandwich. People say, oh, there's Mary. In fact, I heard that that sandwich actually sold, believe it or not, on eBay for some $10,000. People are seeing Mary everywhere. Now, some of this is sort of silly, and we understand that, but some of it is, is downright, unquestionably supernatural. Bleeding statues and weeping statues, and even Mary appearing in some kind of a bodily form to people. I'm back at the study guide. Even Protestants, agnostics, atheists, and others have reportedly been visited, visited or in some way touched by this Mary. I'm using the term Mary in quotes, by the way, Mary. 
All of this raises serious questions for the committed Christian believer. Is this really Mary? Could it even be Mary? And how can we tell if this is true or if it is a dangerous what? Deception from Satan. These are some of the very questions that we will seek to answer. And in answering these questions, we will answer our larger question about the resurrection and the immortality of the soul. Several years ago, I came upon this book here entitled The Thunder of Justice, The Warning, The Miracle, The Chastisement, and The Era of Peace, written by two Catholic individuals, Ted and Maureen Flynn. Now, Ted and Maureen Flynn uh, are here claiming and documenting that Mary, that is what they believe to be Mary, has been appearing to people, as we've just suggested, all over the globe. And she has a special message of warning, a special message of chastisement for planet Earth. And it's actually quoted right here in this book entitled, The Thunder of Justice. In the opening page, it says this. This is supposedly the Virgin Mary speaking. She says... A chastisement worse than the flood is about to come upon this poor and perverted humanity. Fire will descend from heaven, and this will be the sign that the justice of God has as of now fixed the hour of His great manifestation. Fascinating. Here's Mary coming back from the dead. Here's Mary coming from heaven with a special message for us, a special message for planet Earth. And of course, the question for the committed Christian believer like myself and like many of you is, is this really Mary and how can we know for sure? I mean, we really only have two options. One is that it really is Mary and she really does have a special message for us. Or number two, that it is a dangerous, subtle deception of the enemy. We shouldn't be surprised if that is the case, incidentally, because as we've already learned, Satan transforms himself not into an angel of darkness, but into an angel of what? Light. That's exactly right. We would not expect Satan to show up with red leotards and a pitchfork and a pointy tail. No, 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 no. The Bible says he would transform himself into an angel of light. And so we have a very serious question before us this evening, and that is this. Are these so-called Marian apparitions the real deal, or are they a deception brought about by the father of lies? And in answering that question, we're going to answer the larger question of how to face death unafraid and with absolute confidence. Has Mary, the mother of Jesus, been sent with a special message for planet Earth? I want to let you know right now, I believe the answer to that question is no. And here's why. At least I'll give you the answers as to why and you can make your own determination. But I'll say this, if you're going to trust the Bible and the Bible only, I think you'll be forced to come to the same conclusion. Unfortunately for us, false prophets do not show up like this. You know, false prophet. Just dial 1-666-Antichrist. That's 1-666-A-N-T-I-Christ. If a false prophet showed up like this with sort of a sign or a placard hanging around his or her neck, it would be so easy to detect them. Yet, as we've already seen in Matthew chapter 24, Jesus said, I don't remember if it was three or four times, take heed that no man deceives you, that no man deceives you, that no man deceives you. He said false Christ and false prophets would arise and deceive not a few knuckleheads, not a few that weren't paying attention. He said that he, they would arise and deceive many. That's exactly right. Would deceive many. And the reason that deception is so dangerous, of course, as we've already said, that you are unaware that you're being deceived. Satan doesn't show up as, you know, some kind of a figure of darkness who openly opposes Christ, etc., etc. The Bible says that he would transform himself into an angel of light and that his ministers would transform themselves into ministers of light rather than ministers of darkness. And that's our quotation here, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14. And no one says Paul, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. And that's why we can't just look at this thing and say, oh, it's Mary. Clearly it's true. Clearly it's from God. Clearly it's biblical. No, 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 no. We have to test this to see if it is biblical, to see if it is true, and to ask the question, is it even possible that Mary has come back from the dead? Now, in doing that, let's begin by looking at a text of Scripture that's actually not in your study guide. 